This video was brought to you by the TLDR store and you can get 10% off by using code KISHIDA. With that discount, you can grab yourself anything from the store, including our new Japan with Shoes pin badge or, well, anything else. It's linked down below. So on Sunday, Japan's LDP won in a general election. Now, this in itself wasn't big news. After all, the LDP have been in power almost continuously since their formation in 1955. But this was a big relief for a party that's been struggling since its talisman, Shinzo Abe, stepped down in 2020. So in this video, we're going to break down the results, explain what they mean and why they're good news for the LDP. So before we get into the results, a bit of context. The LDP is perhaps one of the most successful political parties in world history. Since its foundation in 1955, the LDP has been in power almost continuously, with the exception of a period between 1993 and 1994, and then again between 2009 and 2012. Unfortunately for them, however, they've been going through a bit of a rough patch recently, which can be basically traced back to the early 2000s. In 2006, Shinzo Abe had a brief stint as Prime Minister, before stepping down in 2007 with ulcerative colitis. After Abe stepped down, the LDP went through two Prime Ministers in just two years, before eventually losing power in 2019 to the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party then went through three Prime Ministers in three years, before Abe's reappearance in 2012. Abe then stayed in power for the next eight years with decisive victories in the House of Representatives in 2012, 2014 and 2017. He was pretty popular too, with an approval rating averaging about 50%. The point is that the LDP and Japanese politics more generally had been relying on Abe for stability since the mid-2000s. No other Prime Minister lasted more than six months and none of them were anywhere near as popular. When Abe finally stepped down in August 2020, his popularity was waning, largely because of his response to the pandemic, despite relatively few deaths in a country with the oldest population in the world. Regardless, Abe was criticised for his apparently relaxed response to the pandemic, which, according to the Oxford Covid government response tracker, was one of the least restrictive policies anywhere around the globe. Anyway, Abe's departure from the LDP leadership triggered what's known as an emergency leadership election, which basically meant that bog-standard party members weren't allowed to vote, and the franchise was restricted to the Liberal Democratic MPs and three representatives from each of Japan's 47 prefectures, for a total of 535 electors. These electors chose Yoshidihei Suga, Abe's right-hand man and chief cabinet secretary as his successor. Originally, Suga's promise of stability endeared him to voters, and his approval rating shot up well above Abe's previous rate. However, Suga's honeymoon period didn't last long. The pandemic got worse, Japan's vaccine program stalled, and Suga was forced to declare a state of emergency. Suga's approval rating therefore plummeted to just 30%, with a net approval of negative 20. And in August this year, he resigned, having lasted just 11 months. This was terrible news for the LDP. Suga's demise seemed to prove that without Shinzo Abe, the LDP couldn't promise political stability any longer, which had been their electoral selling point for the last 70 years. Unlike the last leadership election, the LDP opened this one up to the wider LDP membership and other LDP members of the Japanese legislature. This time, the leadership election was won by Fumio Kishida, a former foreign minister and chairman of the Liberal Democratic Party's Policy Research Council, a position traditionally seen as a stepping stone to leadership of the party. Kishida was sort of the establishment candidate. In fact, Shinzo Abe even once nicknamed him Mr. Status Quo. Kishida was also one of the most centrist candidates running. He focused on wealth distribution, investment in education and renewable energy including nuclear power. To win, he beat out Taro Kono, the vaccines minister, in the final round. Kano was, at least according to polling, more popular with the wider electorate due to his larger social media presence. But unfortunately for him, he was less popular with the LDP establishment, which is why he lost. 
Anyway, Kushida was sworn in as Prime Minister on October 4th this year, and immediately called lower house elections for October 31st, which brings us to today. And this election was actually more competitive than usual, for two reasons. Firstly, Kushida isn't supremely popular. His administration's approval ratings have hovered between 45 and 55%, the lowest for a new prime minister in recent history. And second, the various opposition parties cooperated to make things harder for the LDP. 289 of the lower house seats used the first-past-the-post system, and as the opposition vote is often split between multiple parties, that makes it a lot easier for the LDP to win even with a smaller share of the vote. This time though, opposition parties fielded a single candidate in 213 of the first-past-the-post constituencies. This was a decent plan, but in the end, the LDP won by a larger margin than expected, with 261 of the 465 seats, an outright majority, although down on their 2017 performance. Their junior coalition partner, Kometo, won 32 seats, up from 2017, while the main opposition party, the Constitutional Democratic Party, actually lost seats, going from 107 seats down to just 96. In fact, the only really successful opposition party were the Japan Innovation Party, who quadrupled their seat tally from 11 to 41. This party, also known as Ishin, is a right-wing populist party from Osaka, who advocate for intense deregulation, and while they did well, they unfortunately don't have much appeal outside of their home region, which means that they're unlikely to actually threaten the LDP anytime soon, despite a strong performance this year. Now, we should be clear, this doesn't amount to a ringing endorsement of the LDP. It's still their worst performance since they briefly lost power in 2009, and they were likely helped by the fact that post-COVID, voters wanted some stability. But it's nonetheless a better result than some expected, and it looks at least possible that the LDP might be able to run a stable government without Abe. You get the point though. From the LDP's point of view, this was a pretty good result. They did better than expected, kept their majority, and at least looked like they might have moved on from Abe. But while it was a good result for the LDP, it wasn't such a good result for Japanese politics more generally. Turnout was pretty low, at just 56%, pretty much unchanged from the 54% in 2017, but well below the historical long-term average of 65%. And the fact that the opposition still couldn't capitalise on the relative unpopularity of today's LDP goes to show that there still isn't really a credible opposition in Japan. The Democratic Party's brief stint in power was so chaotic that it doesn't really matter how bad the LDP are doing, voters will still prefer them to the alternatives. Essentially, even as the LDP becomes less and less popular, Japanese voters don't have a real alternative, which just isn't good for Japanese democracy. So, what do you think? Is the LDP's continuing electoral success a testament to their competency? Or is it just that Japanese politics is completely broken, without any functioning opposition? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Like I said at the start, we'd really appreciate it if you checked out the TLDR store. There you can find copies of our books, our high quality enamel pin badges and more, including most countries, and of course, Japan. Get 10% off by using code KUSHIDA, and know that by doing so, you're helping to support content like this. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.